um, I'm sorry, to our presenters today. Uh, the first presenter will be Dr. Pei Sun Lin. He is the program director of the ITS Traffic Operations and Safety at the Center for Urban Transportation Research here at the University of South Florida. He obtained his master's degree from the University of Texas at Austin and doctoral degree from the University of Florida. Currently, Dr. Lin serves as the chair of Intelligent Traffic Signal Operations Committee at the Institute of Transportation Engineers. He has 21 years of work experience and has published and presented numerous papers in national and international conferences. Our second presenter today is Dr. Achilles Cortellas. He is a research associate in the ITS Traffic Operations and Safety Program at Qatar here at USF. He earned his master and PhD degrees from USF, and his dissertation was entitled Operational Evaluation of Advanced Safety Enhancement Devices Review Video System, based on a project funded by the Federal Highway Administration and the Tra Florida Department of Transportation. Dr. Cortellas received a Georgia Bosch Transportation Scholarship and was named Student of the Year from T-Byte during the, his doctoral study. He has co-authored four papers and authored three papers presented and published at the TRB Annual Meeting, ITS World Congress, and AATT Conference. And so at this time, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Pei Song Lin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you to join our way test. And uh, the topic for uh, my presentation today is motorcycle crash analysis uh, at hotspot location in Florida's high priority counties. And uh, first, uh, let me uh, talk about uh, what's the motivation for uh, this study. And as you know, uh, we, in Florida, we, we got our growing population and uh, we are a sunshine state, and we, we, we have many motorcyclists, and I like to take this great opportunity to uh, ride in Florida. Therefore, the motorcycle safety uh, becomes a uh, very important issue here. And uh, the second one uh, is that the number of motorcycle crashes and injury, uh, the number has been doubled uh, since late 1990s uh, to 2008. And so, as you can see, this is a very uh, a critical issue uh, in Florida, uh, how to reduce the motorcycle crashes. And the third motivation is that uh, we, we have Florida Motorcycle Safety Coalition. Uh, it is a group of uh, volunteers and uh, sponsored by FDOT and, and uh, we try to uh, work together and to see uh, how we can uh, reduce the motorcycle crashes and fatalities and injury in Florida. And, and this is our priority, to know what's the, the contributing factors for motorcycle crashes. And with, with understanding of that, then we will be able to come up with a good strategies to improve the safety in Florida. And our objective uh, for this study is that we try to uh, uh, review the uh, review and analyze the motorcycle crashes, and and in order to figure out what is the contributing causes of motorcycle crashes, and and there's a lot of motorcycle crashes uh, in our database, and it's uh, and basically we try to. Uh, uh, choose a, a, a part of the, the crashes for analysis and because the total amount of the crashes uh, is a couple of thousand and it's, it's not that possible to go through each individual one. So that's a, the one we try to identify the hotspot location, uh, especially on the top 10 for the counties and with the highest motorcycle crashes. And the second step is once we identify uh, the, the location and we identify all those uh, crashes, and we're going to analyze that. And through our database and uh, review the police report and to identify uh, what, what, what is the reason for that uh, particular motorcycle crashes. And based on the analysis, we'll be able to determine what is the contributing factor or causes for those crashes. And with the understanding, and then we, we will be able to focus on uh, proper effective uh, countermeasures uh, 
to improve our safety for motorcyclists. And here, uh, I would like to share with you with uh, uh, the number of motorcycle crashes in Florida top 10 high priority counties. And uh, the data we analyzed is from 2005 to 2008. And uh, as you can see from, from uh, this, the Miami uh, Day County uh, is, the, is uh, the number one uh, county with the the most motorcycle crashes. And so you can see the oldest from my right side here to the, the left side. And basically we range up based on the, the total number of four years. And so, so as you can see, this is the, the total of four year uh, motorcycle crashes. In Miami-Dade County, we have more than 5,000 uh, motorcycle crashes. And the last row uh, here is the number of the crashes we reviewed and for each uh, uh, high priority county. And so the next question is how, how do we uh, choose uh, this uh, uh, the, the number of crashes here for analysis? So basically first we, uh, we choose that based on the frequency uh, of the neighboring crashes because there are so many crashes and first we try to identify the hotspot location. So how to identify that is that uh, we, we try to, uh, to figure out the, the crash occur uh, near in the uh, neighboring areas. And, and then we will be able to analyze it become a cluster. So we identify uh, several clusters and with high uh, cra motorcycle crashes and then we go into uh, analyze that particular uh, crash in that clusters. And that's why how we do it. And uh, we also look at, when we look at a crash analysis, we look at the, also look at the environmental variable, such as visibility, roadway condition, road service, whether the weather is good or, or wet. Uh, uh, so we look at different type of the roadway condition to try to make sure is that the roadway condition is a problem uh, to the motorcycle crashes. And the next slide. The next slide I'd like to just share with you is uh, from 2005 to 2008 and for these top 10 high priority counties. And, and this is uh, uh, the, the, the the total crashes, motorcycle crash uh, every year from 2005 to 2008. And as you can see, the Miami, Miami Day County here uh, with the, 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 the highest one, and this Miami Day County and the Brower uh, is the second, and followed by uh, Hillsborough counties. And uh, this slide, we'd like to just show you from different uh, point of view and to see uh, the, the fatal crashes, the injury, uh, injury crashes, and uh, um, oh, one motorcycle only crashes, and all those people with crashes, and they don't, the, the motorcy motorcyclists uh, did not have an endorsement. And so basically here we show you uh, with the num numbers and and I think the purpose here is we try to have a, a, a quick comparison uh, with the different counties. Uh, for example, uh, you can see that uh, there's uh, more crashes uh, occur in Miami-Dade County and those uh, motorcyclists involving with crash, they don't have endorsement. So the green bar here, if you compare to all other uh, counties, as this is the one you can see. And for example, for Borussia County, and there's a lot of injury crashes compared to, to other uh, counties. So this is could give you a good, uh, quick comparison uh, among them. And uh, so the here, another thing I'd like to explain is that, and uh, for example, you see the one motorcycle uh, only crashes and some of the, this crash, just for you to compare the, the number, but this crash can be uh, fatal crash. Some of them can be uh, injury crashes. 
So th this is not mutual uh, exclusive. Okay, and and uh, this slide uh, uh, just would like to uh, uh, give you an, uh, let you know our process of all, all our analysis in the next uh, uh, ten counties. And so for each county, we'll do the same procedure as the one we we uh, show here. So the, so the first is uh, uh, we uh, we based on our database and uh, we use our GIS. And we will be able to plot all the uh, motorcycle-related crashes on, on all the, uh, the GMS map. And so, so that's the first step, we, we do that. And the second one is, in order to identify the hotspot locations, and, and so we want to, to, to create the clusters. And so basically, for each crash, uh, we, we look at that, we, we create a, a circle. Uh, with uh, the radius of 400 feet, and so from there, and so we got we we uh, draw that for each uh, crash location. So for those crash have overlapping with that 400 feet radius, and then we put them together as a cluster. And at the end, we will choose the the top, you know, five or six uh, clusters, and we analyze those crashes. And so, so we draw we draw a circle, uh, 400 feet here, and then we figure out uh, those one with overlapping on that 400 feet radius, and then we we create a cluster for them, and all those crashes will be identified, and then we we review the police report on each of the crash in that in those clusters uh, we we studied. And then based on the police report and analysis on the contributing factors, at the end, uh, we will uh, summarize the crash contributing factors and uh, to, to uh, present that. And, and based on that, we can come up with uh, the strategies uh, for future improvements. And so from, from uh, this slide on, uh, we we going to uh, uh, show you uh, each uh, each county of the top ten uh, high priority counties, and I would uh, uh, have Dr. Akers uh, to uh, to show you more details on each county's uh, crash analysis. Akers, thank you, Dr. Lin. So. Um I would like to show you how we actually uh, did this, and basically I will be presenting the maps we created and the uh, what we found per county. Um, uh, uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the first one just to explain what uh, how it looks like, and then the rest are probably going to be similar. And at the end, we have some results. Now, as you can see, this uh, this is the uh, Lee County in in Florida, and what you see each each uh, red dot is uh, represents a motorcycle related crash. Uh, this includes all the four years, 2005 to 2008, we said before. Uh, using the procedure that Dr. Lin explained before, creating a, a circle or a buffer around each crash and then clustering together the, um, the, the close proximity crashes, we create the clusters and then we find out the hotspots. So the hotspots look like this. This is the same county I just uh, took out the um, uh, everything. I just let some major roads. And as you can see, um, we identified four different locations. Now, um, there are a total of 10 clusters here. And as you can see on the table to your right, um, uh, basically here, what this is, is it means that uh, there was one location that had 19 crashes close, and this is right here where, where it represents with red. There was one location with 12, uh, which was up here. And there is one location with nine crashes, and then there are six locations with seven crashes. So these are the clusters we're talking about. And um, if you add up all the crashes together, you can find out how many uh, we had to review. The reason we um, want to review each police report is because uh, as uh, anybody who has had, has some experience with the Florida crash database knows, that includes all the variables in a police report. 
The problem, though, is that we found through research we've done previous uh, projects, those variables don't really explain the reason behind the crash, basically why a crash happened, uh, what everybody was doing. It explains certain things, but unless we have the, the narrative or the description on which is a part of the report but not included in the database, we cannot be certain. So we have to go in and get the crash reports and read them one by one to identify if indeed the uh, police officer um, uh, put that right. Uh, and then also find more things about the crash uh, that we are missing. So, for example, uh, in Lee County, we found that 39% um, uh, was the rider's fault, 55% uh, was the driver's fault, and we had a 6% non-human error. I should explain that the non-human error crashes are usually, uh, as you can see on the second um, graph, uh, explained by um, loose materials on the road, um, or it, there, it might be a wet surface and the, the rider lost control, although some, some might uh, argue that that is still a responsibility of the rider to ride carefully, and I agree, but um, we put those under uh, not human error crashes. And also, if we had a motorcycle malfunction, uh, let's say the, the throttle was stuck open or a clutch wasn't working or the brakes or the, the blue tire, things like that, uh, where they would cause a crash and not necessarily be preventable. So, as I said, for Lee County, these are the, the numbers we found. And um, initially, the idea behind the whole, the whole research was to see if we can uh, obviously do something about it and why crashes happen, find the contributing causes. And as we can see here that uh, obviously a lot of them are the human human error crashes. And so moving forward, the, the contributing causes for riders and drivers are in these two graphs. As we can see, the top three fold riders are careless driving, which includes really a lot of different things uh, described by the police as careless driving. It might be uh, just playing around uh, a group of motorcycles doing things they shouldn't be doing. There are things that can be described like, um, as you can see here, following too closely uh, or alcohols. Um, but the three, the three top in this uh, for riders is uh, careless driving, uh, improper turn, and we, we clamp some others uh, together so uh, it wouldn't be too many. And that looks like it's, uh, it was a big percentage here. Now, for the drivers, the, uh, the highest uh, causes here were the improper uh, lane change, improper turn, and again, other. Now, when we say improper, basically describes a situation where they basically don't look uh, or they look and they can't see, uh, or it might be a combination of both. Um, obviously, all of you know that sometimes it might be both parties responsible, but obviously, in a crash, you would have one of them being blamed, let's say. Um, those crashes obviously are coded as either one or the other. So there is a little bit of uh, difference between the numbers if you take into consideration that if a motorcycle, for example, is speeding and the driver wasn't paying attention, then both these factors might influence and, and have a crash eventually. So these are the contributing causes for Lee County. Um, as we move forward, um, this is Brevard, so I'm going from the lowest to the highest uh, county. Brevard County, uh, these are the crashes in four years, uh, 2005 to 2008, uh, plotted here. And these are the uh, hotspots we found. Uh, again, um, just to remind you, the clusters mean that we had one location with 15 crashes close to each other, um, one with 13, one with 12, and so forth. And obviously, the cluster numbers are going to change, and that's eventually influencing the how many crashes we had to review per county, and uh, we did that per county, so that's why they're not the same. Now, in this location, as you can see, we only had one major, let's say, with 15, and, and also the other thing I, I wanted to say, keep in mind, that the cluster size obviously changes per county. It's not consistent. Um, we have 15, 13, and so forth, so the, the, the numbers, these numbers here will change per counties. The uh, human error causes, let's say or not, uh, again, we have 46% riders fault, 48% drivers fault, uh, five non-human error, and one we have pedestrian and bicyclist uh, at fault. And the non-human error crashes uh, reasons uh, were um, 
the, the motorcycle is, let's say, struck object on the road, usually all oil on the road. And, of course, the non-human error crashes are usually a motorcycle by itself uh, crashing because they, they lost control for different reasons. Uh, and I'm, I'm having the motorcycle malfunction here separate so that uh, we don't include that in the whatever else can, can be a, a cause. Contributing causes for Brevard County uh, are as follows. For the rider, it was, again, careless driving. Uh, failed to yield right of way, um, surprisingly, and also the, actually in this case, it's uh, the exceeded safe speed limit uh, here, and the um, um, some other crashes. Now for the drivers, it's careless driving and failed to yield right of way, so in this county both uh, drivers and riders uh, seem to have a problem with that, and in proper turning. Now, when we say proper turning, it might be uh, a left turn at a light. So basically, you have somebody at a uh, permissive uh, left turn making a, a left turn and they cut off a motorcycle that comes on the other way. Uh, or they're making a right turn and not paying attention and, and hit a, a motorcycle either in front of them or turning at the same time. We move forward to uh, Duval County. These are the crashes here, and obviously they're more uh, widespread than other you know, concentrated and smaller counties. And these are the hotspots. As you can see, we're starting to have more clusters and more crashes. We have the, the highest here is 24 crashes at the same uh, location, and uh, as we can see here in the hotspot here, and then um, you can see the rest of the hotspots. And then... The factors here are 48% rider, 45% driver at fault, uh, 6 and 1. As you can see, the numbers kind of stay uh, consistent. And um, again, we have human error, and then again, loose sand, gravel, water on road, uh, or a deformity on the road, and then some motor motorcycle malfunction. Obviously, those numbers are not big and will never be. And the contributing causes, uh, careless driving, for riders uh, exceeded uh, stated speed limit, and I would um, I wanted to show an exceeded safe speed limit. Now these two are separate. Uh, the stated speed limit basically means the posted speed limit at the at, at each road, roadway. The safe speed limit uh, usually is lower, and it might mean that if, for example, it's raining, uh, it might not be safe to go at the speed limit. So it, it's uh, what, what this explains is the safe speed limit uh, under the, the current conditions of the road. So uh, that's why there is a difference between the two. Um, obviously, it's illegal to go more than the stated speed limit, the posted speed limit. Uh, but sometimes going more than the safe speed limit might put you in a, in a harm's way. For drivers... We have careless driving, uh, failed to yield right away, and improper lane change. We move on to Palm County, uh, Palm Beach, sorry. Uh, Palm Beach, uh, obviously being a coast, one of the coastal uh, counties we have, uh, as you can see, there are only um, uh, two along 95 and uh, US 91. The uh, causes here, the, the hotspot, sorry, um, we have 1 with 30, 2 19s, uh, 1 12, and so on. And they are obviously located here. One would expect the highest to be uh, along uh, uh, 95. Uh, and then the contributed causes here, we have 44% uh, riders, 49% um, driver fault, and then 5.6 and, and 0.7. Um, and, again, the, the motorcycle malfunction is one of the, the causes, and some pavement on some wet roads uh, is under non-human error. Contributing causes for Palm uh, Beach is, uh, for riders, is careless uh, driving. And then we also have the following too closely. This obviously can be put together with uh, maybe going too fast as well, uh, so they don't have time to stop. Um, and then exceed the safe speed limit. So somebody that is following too closely, the problem is that they find themselves not being able to stop safely uh, when there is traffic in front of them uh, that, that is stopping for either uh, an intersection or uh, traffic. For drivers, we have the failed, uh, failed to yield right of way, uh, improper lane change, and improper turn as the major contributing causes. Next move. Go to Volusia County. Volusia is one of those uh, counties that is very, um, uh, has a lot of crashes, especially during um, 
um, the uh, the big events uh, like uh, bike week. Um, we can see the crashes obviously are close to the beach, most of them, and as we go to the hotspots, um, not surprisingly, um, but as you can see, the biggest the cluster here is 143 crashes uh, located at the same time. Now, I should rem remind everybody that these, um, the crashes are plotted for all four years, so it doesn't mean that all these crashes happen at the same time or at the same period or at the same year even. But what it shows is that this location, for some reason, is um, uh, prone to having crashes or a lot of crashes. So these are the hotspot locations for this uh, uh, for this county. Contribute causes again: 45% uh, rider fault, 47% uh, driver. Uh, we have some not human and, and pedestrian bicyclist, and the not human error causes uh, are. Again, loose sand, gravel, or water, or deep on the road, and motorcycle malfunction. Contributing causes for Volusia County, uh, for riders is careless driving, uh, failed to yield right away, and uh, exceeded the uh, safe speed limit. Careless driving um, for drivers, failed to yield right away, and improper lane change. And obviously, we have the improper turn as well. They're sharing. Next county is Pinellas County, a uh, popular county for motorcycles. As you can see, this is a little bit more spread out throughout the county. It's not uh, concentrated in one location. But doing the analysis, we did find some hotspots, as you can see. So our biggest the cluster here was 28 crashes uh, along, uh, I think it's US-19. And uh, obviously, you can see the other locations. Analysis shows that 46% uh, uh, of riders were at fault and 50% of drivers were at fault. We have the uh, not human again, uh, loose gravel, sun, etc., and some motor motorcycle malfunction crashes. Contributing causes include uh, for riders the uh, improper lane change, which is uh, um, uh, a big one, exceed the safe speed limit, which is the, 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 the biggest uh, cause, and uh, following too closely. For drivers, we have the uh, fail to yield right away, and then um, improper lane change, which is uh, uh, the biggest, or it shares with the fail uh, right away, and also the improper turning. That's for Pinellas, and then we move to Orange County. Orange County, again, is one of those uh, uh, counties that has uh, a big um, population of uh, motorcycles during uh, uh, bike events, and as we can see in the center here, are the, um, the clusters we created. Uh, someone can see the, uh, the clusters start from 44 crashes at the same location and then move down to 13. Similarly, we have 45% riders at fault, 50% drivers at fault and uh, again, 4% human error. I should point out at this point that the non-human error crashes stay similar, and we'll have a, a slide at the end uh, summarizing this. And again, we do have some debris on the road, motorcycle malfunction, and wet road uh, being the causes of non-human error crashes, uh, in quotations. <laughs> Contributed causes. Uh, now, this is the, the only county, I think, that has this uh, uh, big um, percentage of careless uh, driving. It's almost 50%. Um, following too closely uh, is the second, and then we do have the um, improper lane chain, actually, and the state data speed limit are, are, are high in this county for riders. Drivers is uh, careless driving, improper lane change, and also the failed to yield right away. Then we come to our own county here, uh, Hillsborough County. Again, crashes look like they are spread out throughout the county. And these are our hotspots. Surprisingly, uh, Hillsborough County doesn't have that many uh, crashes uh, close together, meaning our biggest cluster was only 25. So um, we have 25 and then move down. Um, now, uh, I should point out that these maps that I have here, due to the small screen, obviously, I tried to put the, the closest or the biggest, uh, the majority of the clusters, but it might not have all of them. Um, we do have the maps that obviously that show everything, but someone has to either print them in a large piece of paper or use 
the computer to zoom in and, and check out the, um, the locations. The uh, Hillsborough County, it shows that the drivers actually had a major um, uh, majority of uh, at full crashes. And then, uh, again, human, not human error is 4%. And we do have some sound on the roadway, which apparently causes uh, riders to lose control and the tire blowout in this case that we didn't have in others. For Hillsborough County, uh, um, the, the reasons were smaller or clumped together in, uh, in other, uh, in smaller um, uh, numbers. So we have exceeded the uh, speed limit, um, failed to stop uh, for traffic ahead. So this might be with uh, falling too closely and obviously failed to yield right away. Uh, again, right drivers uh, is the same, uh, failed to yield right away. And then uh, we have the, the rear and the stop motorcycle in, in front of them. So this might be falling too closely or even going too fast. And then other reason. Broward County shows, um, and this is this is the second to last, if I remember right, the um, um, county has a lot more crashes. Uh, we're going up, and then you can see that um, they are widespread throughout the whole county. These are the hotspots uh, we identified, and uh, again, surprisingly, the biggest one is 31 crashes. Uh, as you can see here. If this was, if the, if the buffer we used was bigger than 400 feet, this, for example, cluster would be clumped together, so it would be higher. And the uh, analysis shows that 57% uh, almost is uh, riders' uh, fault, uh, 39, which is the lowest, is drivers' fault. And then we do again have the human error and the pedestrian motorcyclist. The, uh, and the same reasons for the not human error crashes. Contributing causes include uh, careless driving, um, following too closely, and the exceeds the uh, safe speed limit. And then for drivers, we do have the uh, fail to yield right away, uh, improper lane change, and improper turn. And we have the last one. Miami-Dade uh, County is obviously the, uh, the most busiest and, and, and highest uh, in crashes, um, if you if you look at the um, the number, uh, we're talking about 12, 1300 crashes a year, at least for the four years we had. And then our hotspots here, uh, as you can see, was obviously the biggest one. The um, this is Miami uh, uh, Beach, I think, and uh, it has 294 crashes clustered together. Now, one might say that that, you know, looks basically the whole, uh, this includes three or four side streets uh, along with uh, the main main street here, A1A. So, um, because we used obviously the same position as the others, uh, you know, this, this is what we ended up with. But obviously this is much different situation than any other county. Uh, and it included the, the large, largest number of review crashes. We reviewed 558 uh, crashes in this county. The uh, reasons for this one was, uh, again, though, 50-50 almost, uh, which is uh, 50 riders and 45 drivers. And then we do have our 4% not human error again. So and this, this is, again, how they – so the reasons for um, not human error is the same. And the contributed causes include um, careless driving for riders, uh, fail to yield right of way, and uh, exceed the safe speed limit. For drivers, the highest, the three are careless driving, improper lane change, and following too closely. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lin to uh, summarize our findings. Uh, thank you, Achilles. Uh, yes, I think as you go through all the uh, top 10 high priority county, uh, from uh, Lee County all the way to Miami Day, and uh, uh, we reviewed 2,390 motorcycle crashes. And uh, the, the figure here which is a summary of the com comparison of the rider at fault or the driver at fault and the uh, non human error and pedestrian bicycle at fault. So, so as you can see that uh, it, each county, uh, uh, they, they vary uh, the percentage of the rider at fault. And uh, the next I will show you the summary of that. 
And this is uh, uh, the, co the comparison really between the rider at the fault and the driver at the fault. And as you can see that 48% uh, is driver at the fault and 47% is rider at the fault. And uh, as you uh, recall that when we review all those top 10 high priority counties, uh, for uh, seven out of the ten counties we review, uh, most uh, the the bigger portion is the driver at fault, and then uh, the the rider at fault, and there are only three counties. Especially the last two we reviewed, uh, Brower and the Miami Dade County, and they have a much bigger percentage of the uh, rider at fault, and and. And here, the one we show in this slide is the, the combination of all the, uh, the, all the, the crashes in Florida, uh, the, the top 10 high product counties. And we come, come out with 48% uh, versus 47%. Uh, so they are, they are very close. Uh, either, either it's the driver at fault or the rider at fault. And overall, the, uh, the non-human uh, causes crashes is only about 4%. And 3% of that is uh, because the loose sand, gravel, water, oil, or dip, or something on the road. And only 1% is the uh, motorcycle malfunction. And based on the analysis of all those top 10 high priority counties, we also summarize the top three uh, contributing causes for riders and also for the drivers. And as we can see here, uh, number one for the rider is uh, careless riding. Uh, and second one is exceed the steady step limit. And so the one is the fail to yield to right away. On the other hand, for the drivers, uh, number one is fail to yield the right away. And second and is improper lane changes. And third, is improper turns. Uh, so from here, uh, we can see that uh, for for the riders, uh, because motorcycle is not as stable as uh, the vehicles. So if you don't uh, pay attention on the riding, uh, it's very it's much easier to cause crashes than the the vehicles and and. Another two uh, factor here is uh, exceed the steady or safe speed limit. So a lot of time when we see the motorcycle crashes, one one can, can be one of the major contributing factor is the speeding. And so when the vehicle is in high speed, uh, motorcycle in high speed and in a stable condition, uh, any uh, uh, sudden uh, change lane move or stop, it, it can easily cause crashes. And the third one is fail to yield the right away, and and so so this is a, the three. It's not really a surprise for us to see these top three uh, uh, contributing factors. And on the other hand, if we, we look at the, from the driver part, and fail uh, to yield right away, improper lane changes, improper turns, and and what very important thing here we can see is that in a lot of situation, it look like the driver will not be able to to see the motorcyclist. That's why they change the lane in front of motorcycles. And uh, another thing is they may see the motorcycle, they may see that far away, but actually uh, if motorcycle is right pretty fast, they, they can be right in front of your uh, side uh, very quickly. And and so we need to make sure the rider will be able to to, to pay attention and, and see and double checking whether the, the motorcycle is just around uh, your vehicles. And so this is a good uh, analysis to, to learn all this and, and, and this will help us uh, in the future to focus on uh, what we should do uh, to improve uh, motorcycle safety. And uh, the la this is the last slide of this presentation. And uh, at this point, I would like to uh, uh, give acknowledgement uh, to our for the Motorcycle Safety Coalition. And, and this is uh, the coalition established in 2008. When, when earlier, when I mentioned uh, to, from uh, late uh, 1990, 
to two thousand eight our motorcycle crash is almost double. And and that's the, the big motivation here uh to to have the for the motorcycle collision and have all the uh stakeholders related to the motorcycle safety uh work together and, and uh, to improve the motorcycle safety. And and we use a, a comprehensive motorcycle safety program to to uh to improve uh the safety of motorcycle uh driving uh, motorcycle riding and the reason why it's comprehensive because uh, the motorcycle crashes are involved with them, uh, many many things and it's not just a single approach we can uh, improve that and we need to have uh, all the different uh, stakeholders to work together and from different approach uh, to do that and the second point here is that uh, our effort in these two three years we believe uh, we significantly contribute the reduction of motorcycle crash in Florida. And here I show you, uh, just show you the number. And the, the latest uh, 2010 uh, crash data just came out uh, on August uh, 31st. And so it's just in time uh, for us to be able to share this information with you. And as you can see, this is the 2008, 2009, 2010. And from 2008 to 2009, uh, we do to be able to have a significant reduction on the motorcycle fatality. We got 25.1 percent reductions, and we got 12.7 percent reduction on the motorcyclists injured, and we also have 13.6 percent uh, reduction on the, the total motorcycle crashes in Florida. And follow that big improvement in 2010. And we still be able to continue to reduce the, the motorcycle fatality in Florida. We got 0.6.91 percent reduction on uh, motorcycle fatality here, and 14 point there were seven percent on the motorcycle is injured, and we also almost have 10 percent of reduction on the motorcycle crashes. And uh, so this is a really uh, very good news for for us, and uh, also for other motorcycle. Uh, riders and uh, or driver in, in Florida and uh, we will continue uh, the effort and uh, we appreciate uh, your participation and we, we will hope uh, in the next uh, our uh, project Grand Cycle we would like to work even closely with all the, the county cities and, and uh, to implement uh, or assist them to implement the strategy and they would like to implement. And, and that's come through my presentation. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Lin. All right. At this time, we would like to open the floor up for questions. Uh, to ask a question, if you look up in your left-hand uh, side, you want to click on where it says Q&A. Uh, you can type your question or comment there and then click Ask. And then we will go through as many as we can uh, between now and the end of our hour. Uh, the first question we have is, um, would it be more appropriate to link the reason for crash to the hotspots, as this may lead new data relevant to the driver behavior? Uh, I would say that, uh, first of all, the way we did this, obviously, the crashes we reviewed are in hotspots, so they are inherently connected with, uh, basically, our findings are for those hotspots. So, if we found that, um, you know, uh, about 50-50 percent uh, is driver's and riders fault are for those locations. Now, I, I should say that when we started this um, analysis, uh, one expectation or one um, hypothesis, let's say, was that a certain number or a fair number of crashes would be because of either we roadway problems or um, issues, some kind of issues that we could potentially fix by, uh, by design. Um, finding that it's the human error, 96% almost is human error crashes. That shifts the way we're going to uh, try to implement our, let's say, education or uh, some other uh, campaigns or um, some, some other ways to actually get to the people and basically change their behavior. Um, so I would say that it is already linked, uh, but we could potentially, one thing that we will do is, uh, first of all, we, we're going to continue with newer uh, data to uh, add and then also um, find, for example, uh, 
time of day and um, uh, time of year, because we know that these uh, changes, as we said, the six factors that we initially were into consideration was lighting conditions, weather, road surface conditions, uh, road condition, visibility, and road type, and all those seem to have no effect. In other words, most of the crashes happen on a, a sunny day during daylight with a, a dry pavement, um, you know, nothing weird, let's say. So that led to, to show that um, under the, the, the ideal conditions, I would suppose, crashes still happen, obviously, and that's because uh, it's the humans to blame, not anything else. Yeah, uh, I just have one more to add here is that uh, it's, we can see that it's almost like 94, 95 percent uh, is human errors and uh, involved, uh, involved in the motorcycle crashes. And this percentage is even higher than the general uh, vehicle crashes. And uh, for the vehicle crashes, basically the, the one we know is that uh, 90 percent of uh, 90% of the crashes, uh, human error is involved, and 60% uh, human error is the major contributing factor to the general vehicle crashes. But in, for motorcycle crashes, and it's almost like 95% here, and so that's why uh, we know that we should focus much more on how to improve that on the human error reductions. All right, thank you. We have our next question here. Uh, when measuring overall increase or decrease in crashes and fatalities, are you taking into account the number of vehicles being sold per year? Um, for example, the, num the motorcycle industry experienced double-digit percentage growth in sales from the 90s up through about 2007 or 2008. Since then, the number of sales has dropped significantly. Uh, I think this is a very good question. Uh, and and here, uh, one thing we, we look at that is that uh, because uh, in Florida, as you can see, uh, our population continues to grow and, and, and uh, you know, we have more, look at, we have more and more people ride motorcycles or register. And, and something we really look at is, is the, uh, the number of registrations. And, and that number uh, is continue to grow and, and all, all pretty stable and steadily growing in Florida in these recent years. And, and especially right now, economy, look like we got a, a tough time now. And, and we also see, you know, some uh, driver and start to ride motorcycles. And so overall, uh, the trend of the registration is, is continue to grow. And, and that's why, uh, the, the improvement uh, we, we uh, saw earlier on this reduction is a, a, a very good news for us and, and to, to, to support, uh, you know, the effort we, we put on, on, on this improvement. Okay, thank you. Um, our next question is, uh, can these results be shared with motorcyclists who are learning to ride a motorcycle and who are seeking an endorsement? Uh, yeah, definitely, and, and we try to uh, use different uh, channel uh, education campaign and uh, participate in the bi week and, and uh, send information uh, to whoever uh, would like to request information. And we will sh we are very willing, and the coalition uh, will share all this information and not to both uh, dri uh, driver and the uh, motorcycle riders. And that's we we are very happy to do that. Oh, by the way, and we also had a Florida, uh, we had right a uh, Smart Florida uh, uh, website, and uh, so if anyone would like to request any uh, information, material, or promotion items, and, and they can go to the website and, and to re do the request. All right, thank you. Um, next question is, what has the analysis of different counties revealed as to the effect of geometrical designs in the counties that would have caused the accident? Is there any similarity? I would say that um, from our research, uh, obviously the, the number one location uh, that, that accidents happen are in or close to intersections, and that's where most of the con conflicts are. Um, and that's kind of the, the only thing that was uh, consistent between the counties. Now, one of the things, obviously, that, um, as I said, we were looking at was if roadway design um, 
was playing a role in the crashes and uh, from this uh, it doesn't look like it is but one of the things that we are doing and we did and we will continue to do is visit the hotspots for each county and uh, from the aspect of um, uh, roadway or the roadway design see if there is anything that is wasn't considered when uh, uh, one was designed for motorcycles so if there is something that can be improved uh, roadway wise uh, we will make sure to uh, give it to the local um, authorities to uh, to be able to uh, to fix it. Yes, and one example uh, I can uh, recall is that uh, if you look at uh, the Miami-Dade uh, motorcycle crashes, and there's a, a big uh, amount of motorcycle crash occur in South Beach. And uh, if you have been there, you know that you ride there, and uh, it's, there's a lot of people there, and and also they got a lot of uh, driveway, uh, uh, the spacing are very short. And so if you ride a motorcycle there, or people drive a vehicle there, if you don't pay attention, it's very easy to have some uh, collision uh, crash there. And and so maybe uh, something we should do to make sure good uh, uh, side distance, uh, make sure both driver and the rider can see very well and not block by any uh, sign or tree or cars and that can be something very easy and, and we can see about and try to see we can do the improvement over there. Okay, great. Another question that's come in says, have you communicated your fines to the specific local authorities so that they can see what they can do to reduce the hotspots? Uh, uh, this is a, uh, one of the major purpose is uh, we we is we are going to uh, work with closely and with uh, the local uh, uh, county or cities and some of them we already contacted and and start to work with them and some of the analysis we just finalized that so so this is uh, the, t the the one of our uh, tests we're going to. Uh, work very closely with the local county cities and not just limited to these uh, top 10 uh, high priority counties, but definitely we will work very closely with top 10 high priority county, uh, uh, their uh, engineer and, and uh, CTST and, and everybody involved with the motorcycle crashes. Okay, great. Uh, another question that's come in says, is the failure to yield the right-of-way on the part of the driver in a situation at an intersection where the driver is turning left in front of the motorcyclist? I would say that uh, in the majority of cases, yes, although uh, sometimes uh, fail to yield right-of-way might mean that and, and this is the problem when you review a crash. Sometimes it provides information, sometimes it doesn't. And it, it really depends on, on the uh, police officer that is uh, calling the report to basically get it right. The, the, and so if somebody changes lane or um, makes a turn either left or right, uh, although those are specific variables and you can call that, okay, this person made any proper lane change, you still, you can still have it as under fail to use right away. But in the majority of cases, you're right, the, um, uh, at the intersection when a, a car is making a left turn and they're cutting basically off a driver that is coming in the opposite direction, that's the fail to eat right away. Okay, great. And we have one last question coming in. Uh, can the method be done manually, for instance, without GIS, and is there a guide available? Um, I am sure that it can be done. Uh, basically, this included both uh, a, a map and a manual method. As I said, we had to go and review uh, each crash uh, report one by one. So that was a manual aspect of it. The, the GIS was basically used just to create the map and being able to select the hotspots because obviously at some point we had to have a cutoff point on how many crashes we would review because reviewing all of them would be a lot. So we decided to use GIS just to make the map and, and, and get the hotspots first uh, or get the hotspots and decide, okay, how many crashes are we going to review for each county? And then we got those crashes, for, uh, the crash reports from FDOT, and we had to review them manually. So there is no uh, certain, you know, there is no um, manual or anything, uh, because this is the first time that this has been done. Although we can do provide some guidelines for somebody that wants to do this, um, I would say if, uh, if it's for the state of Florida and for a county that, that is not included here, 
Uh, if you can contact us, we could potentially help you and, and provide you the information you need, or at least the maps from GIS that you need if you don't have access to this uh, service. Okay, well, at this time, I'd like to conclude our presentation. Uh, we thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, just so you know, our next webcast will be on September 22nd on flooded bus barns and buckled rails, uh, public transportation and climate change adaptation. We hope you're able to join us. Uh, if you would, before you depart, we would like to ask you to uh, take part in our evaluation. It should only take just a couple of minutes or just a minute or so to do that. And um, thank you for joining us.